Call him a startup specialist, serial entrepreneur, or in the words of a renowned Silicon Valley-based investor, David Size, the most successful angel investor in the past decade. Reid Hoffman has earned it all. Hey everyone and welcome to Booked, where we inspire others with inspiring stories. In today's video, we are going to go over the success story of LinkedIn and talk about its founder, Reid Hoffman. So make sure to watch this video till the end because we're going to share with you the books that Reid Hoffman, the founder, read and wrote along his amazing journey. Books that changed his life and that may change yours. But before getting to the middle of today's video, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Unlike most tech entrepreneurs who dropped out of college to build startups that later became unicorns, Reid Hoffman completed his education up to the master's level. His academic intelligence landed him both the Dinkelspiel Award and the Marshall Scholarship that enabled him to get a bachelor's degree in symbolic systems and cognitive science from Stanford University and a master's in philosophy from Wolfson College, Oxford in 1993. At an early age during his college days, Reid Hoffman became passionate about changing the world on a large scale. After graduating from Stanford University in 1990, Reid Hoffman wanted to become a professor and public intellectual as he believed this would help him impact the world. Even though Hoffman would later achieve his dreams of impacting the world, it was through another path. The Different Routes to Success Bill Gates started coding at the age of 13 at high school and helped computerize his school payroll system. Elon Musk sold his first software at the age of 12. Mark Zuckerberg started coding at the age of eight, and the list continues. While Hoffman isn't a programmer, he started his career early. At the age of 12, he got his first pay job at Chaosum, a gaming company based in Oakland near his home. He worked as an editor and did well at his role and was featured as a character in the company's game. He was an avid lover of games, and at age 10, his babysitter introduced him to a strategy and role-playing game called Dungeons & Dragons, which kick-started his love for strategy games. He often attributes his business strategy skills to his childhood gaming habits. The Twisted Path to Fame Hoffman never imagined he would impact the world on a larger scale by building social networks. He had considered careers as a computer scientist in philosophy and also academia. Indeed, after graduating from Oxford, Hoffman spent some time at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology reading and writing a lengthy analysis on understanding computers and cognition. It was during Hoffman's time at Oxford and MIT he realized that he needed to switch careers. Hoffman decided to leave his plans of pursuing a career in academia, science or philosophy, and instead pursue a career in entrepreneurship. That was the decision that made Hoffman a famous entrepreneur, and in the words of Davis Size, the most successful angel investor in the past decade. The Becoming Having decided to pursue a career in business and entrepreneurship, he headed to Silicon Valley to build startups of his own, but faced difficulties. All the venture capitalists Hoffman pitched to declined to invest in his idea for a single reason. Hoffman had not managed or shipped a product. He had not worked in a real job, except for a summer internship at Inglenook, a wine company in Napa Valley. This made him halt his ambition of starting a business temporarily and work for a few organizations to gain the required experience needed to build his own business. Reid Hoffman got his first job at Apple and joined efforts to build Apple's first attempt at an online social network called eWorld. At eWorld, Hoffman focused on user experience. Although he was good at it, he wanted to work with the products team, perhaps because of the feedback received from investors he pitched to. One day Hoffman met the staff in charge of product management and offered a few ideas to improve the product. That gave Hoffman his first opportunity at product management. eWorld was short-lived as it was later acquired by AOL six months down the line, but Reid Hoffman made his mark. Building on his experience ensuring a good user experience at Apple's eWorld and volunteering in the product management team, Hoffman moved on to Fujitsu. At Fujitsu, he got the opportunity to focus on the area he wanted. He was the director of product management and development. Now that Hoffman has gained experience at two top companies, he's now ready to resume his dream of building tech companies that will impact the world on a larger scale. The Journey to Large-Scale Impact 
Reid Hoffman's dream had always been to impact the world on a large scale. And after realizing that he could not achieve that through a career in academia, he switched to business and entrepreneurship. After working for Apple and Fujitsu, Hoffman co-founded a company called SocialNet and was in charge of products. At SocialNet, he designed a product that helped people establish identities based on their real-world interests and connect online. SocialNet existed long before companies like MySpace, Facebook came on board using that same concept. But was SocialNet a success? Stay glued as we find out. The Interlude Shortly after Hoffman co-founded SocialNet, they secured funds from an investor to keep things going. He had finally garnered the experience he needed to convince investors to fund his ideas. However, SocialNet began to have scaling issues. As a master of strategies, he disagreed with the board of directors on different occasions. These disagreements led to his exit from the company. Hoffman thought about starting a new company and applying all he had learned from SocialNet to grow a better company. Peter Thiel, who was a co-founder at PayPal, invited him to join them as an employee. Before the offer from Peter Thiel, Hoffman had been a board member at PayPal for a year now. But his new offer meant that he had to be a day-to-day -day employee at PayPal. PayPal was a big shot at that time. All the big names were using PayPal as their payment gateway, and the brightest people wanted to work there. Hoffman described PayPal as a place where incredible things were happening. Hoffman saw working at PayPal as an opportunity to work at the hub of a rapidly evolving internet universe, meet smart people, and improve his network. He accepted the offer and joined as chief operating officer. His journey into being one of the most prolific Silicon Valley investors started at PayPal. If he did not join PayPal, he may not be as successful today. Finally hitting the bullseye. Reid Hoffman's short stint at PayPal paved the way to his later success in the startup space eBay acquired PayPal two years after Hoffman joined. As a result, some of the key team members at PayPal left to start their own companies. They're called the PayPal Mafias. The Mafias left after the PayPal acquisition and created companies like LinkedIn, Tesla, YouTube, SpaceX Inc., Affirm. In Hoffman's case, he took another shot at social networking, this time not for dating or making friends, but to help people achieve what he has always advocated getting access to a global network of professionals. Hoffman went on to build LinkedIn into a prolific business. He served as the founding CEO in the first four years and became president of products in 2007 and executive chairman in 2009. Hoffman led his company to an initial public offering and later sold all the shares to Microsoft in 2016 for a whopping $26 billion in cash. What a journey Reid Hoffman had! His journey did not end at LinkedIn. Today, Hoffman is now focusing on investing in startups and has investments in great companies like Facebook, Airbnb. He launched Master of Scale, a podcast where he shares the story of entrepreneurs across the world. Book Recommendation Reid Hoffman is a successful entrepreneur, but he also made mistakes. His first business failed. He missed out on some business deals. What if you could be a version of Hoffman without all the mistakes? We have listed some books recommended by Reid Hoffman that will help you in your business journey and also avoid the mistakes he made. High Growth Handbook by Eland Gill Eland Gill played a crucial role in the success of tech giants such as Google and Twitter. The author talks about the role of a CEO, managing a board, initial public offerings, Remember Hoffman had funding issues at the initial stage of his career. He also had disagreements with the board of directors in his first company. To avoid making the same mistakes, you should read this book. Essentialism by Greg McCoon. In this book, the author talks about focusing on things that matter. Remember that Hoffman wanted to change the world through academia, but later decided to switch to entrepreneurship because it gave him a better platform to achieve his goals. This book will help you discover what matters to you and how to accomplish it in less time. Smart People Should Build Things by Andrew Yang Andrew Yang highlights how schools churn out more people suited for employment than people who build things. He believes that to fix the economy, smart people should start a business and stay committed to their business on a longer term. He suggested ways smart and young graduates can launch startups 
instead of working for a business all their lives. Blitz Scaling by Reid Hoffman and Chris Ye. In Blitz Scaling, Hoffman talked about growing a sustainable company. For him, it's not about how fast a company grows, but how you remain sustainable. He also highlights that it's impossible to fail when building businesses. Entrepreneurs should focus more on the wins and takeaways. So Good They Can't Ignore You by Cal Newport. Newport advises young people to develop their talents to the point that people cannot do without their services. He pointed out that the only way to be that good is to focus and improve on things that can do well. According to the Wall Street Journal, Hoffman said his best career decision was joining PayPal. If he did not join them, he would not have met people who helped him build LinkedIn. But what informed that decision? It all boils down to knowing what works. We need to assess our journey periodically and figure out the next steps. The road to success is not a smooth one. Hoffman's first startup failed. He also missed an opportunity to invest in Stripe. But there were also significant wins. Hoffman's investment in Facebook of around $37,500 is now worth $400 million, and his investment in Airbnb and other tech giants. In life, you win some and you lose some. Take the lessons of failure and channel them to success.